Hi, I'm Dr Ray Middleton and in this film I'm going to explain what a psychologically informed environment or PI is and show you how easy it is to become a PI champion or PI lead within your service or organisation. I'm also going to show you how to create a PI self-assessment for a service using the Pizzazz self-assessment tool created by Robin Johnson. You can get additional information downloaded for free around this PI self-assessment from pylink.net. Once you've gathered views from your staff on where the service is currently at in terms of PI, you can type up your self-assessment report either into a Word document or onto some software called iAbacus. iAbacus allows larger organisations to reflect on their PI data for several services at once to gain, to gain a better, bigger perspective on the whole organisation in terms of PI. But you don't need to use iAbacus, you can just type up your self-assessment for PI into a Word document. I've helped over 40 services to develop a PI self-assessment report, and the good news is it's really easy to do. The upgraded PI version 2 has five categories to assess your service around. These are psychological awareness, training and support, learning and inquiry, the three R's, that's the rules, roles and responsiveness. And the fifth PI area is spaces of opportunity. Once you've defined a PI area, ask people to think about where, how they'd rate the service at the moment on a, some sort of scale from poor, basic, progressing or advanced. Ask them what evidence they have to support this score, which validates any good work you're doing already and, and you get that down but also say, well, what helps us to improve in this area? And you can highlight and uh, value different points of view about what people think is helpful. Ask people what hinders in this area and what makes it difficult to progress. And that's really important to tap in to value the points of view of all staff members here about what makes it difficult to progress. And finally, ask people to come up with a realistic plan to improve in this area. So you're co-producing a plan. Remember to explain to the staff team what the category means so they know what they're assessing the service on. So next I'm going to define each PI category to check our understanding by opening up a dialogue with Robin Johnson. The next PI area is psychological awareness. We often describe a PI as a service that takes into account the psychological makeup, the thinking, emotions, personalities and past experiences of the people in the service in the way that it operates to achieve what it wants to do as a service. You could start by considering how well staff understand their own emotional and mental well-being. Then consider how well staff understand the people that they're working with in terms of connecting patterns of thinking and emotion and behaviour and the past patterns connected to the present situation. Consider to what extent all staff are aware of the impact the work has on their emotional and mental well-being. Are staff willing to engage in reflective practice? To what extent are staff aware of burnout and secondary trauma? Do staff have good self-care skills and a good work-life balance? How good is the organisation at supporting its staff? Are there high rates of staff sickness and turnover? In terms of understanding clients' complex needs, psychologically, a higher score may be supported if all staff are aware of trauma-informed approaches. Do staff have an awareness of the emotional wear and tear of the work and are they able to show compassion and active empathy for their clients or the people that you're working with? Are they aware of specific engagement approaches and techniques that might work? Does staff know why motivation and trust might be an issue for clients who have experienced past trauma? Have staff been trained in any psychological models or frameworks or techniques that might be relevant to the people with complex needs? There I'm thinking about reflective practice, emotional resilience or effective coping strategies for the emotional wear and tear on the front line of working with, with people with complex needs. I've helped many organisations and services to develop PI and it's normal and common for service to, services to score this area lower if they can acknowledge staff busyness 
and burnout make it hard to develop and hold in mind a good psychological understanding of themselves and their clients. So use the framework to be honest because most of the services I work with uh, score it lower when they're being honest and saying actually we struggle, we're very busy or we feel we're, we, we started to mimic the chaos and confusion of the clients we're with. It might not be like that in your service in which case you can rate this higher but I'm just saying the more honest you can be about the average score of where you're at now, you're more likely to improve because you're keeping it real. So Robin, I've kind of tried to touch on a few topics there around the psychological awareness theme. Um, some of it was about the emotional wear and tear and uh, things like self-care. Some of it was about skills that the staff can apply and learn. Some of it was about understanding the people with, uh, uh, you know, that people are getting alongside with more complex needs. Uh, things like they, they, they will have, the research says it's got, they've got more than the average amount of trauma and neglect in their past. So uh, an awareness of that can be helpful. Um, what are your thoughts about the, the summary I've given there? Okay, well, I, th I thought an awful lot of that really was um, focused on the staff psychological awareness of themselves. And so mm -hmm. um, a lot of that went back into the stuff we've been talking about before about staff training and support. And yeah, I, I, that's entirely legitimate. It shows how all these things feed into each other. But for me, the, the main focus of psychological awareness is mm. about understanding the client, understanding the service. Wow understanding right. where, where where they've come from so i i would have balanced those two aspects rather differently and put much more emphasis on um but it is very much around thinking who is this person that is walking in the door that's sitting down in front of me mm. how's their past experience as you say how's that going to impact not just on their behavior but also on what they how they see me what, what, mm. what are they going to make? Oh, but that's about them rather than about me, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. About focusing yeah. the attention. But it, it, it is primarily about using ordinary human empathy. You can call mm. it emotional intelligence if you, if, you, if you like that kind of language. But it's really about saying in this kind of work, it is the relationships you form that do most of the work. It's not the phone call. Mm -hmm or the mm -hmm. assessment that you wrote down, it's the extent mm. to which you can actually engage that person and, and to, so that they feel mm. that they are a, a rounded person in your eyes and not just a set of eligibility criteria and tasks for you to take away and do. The more we can convey a sense that there's a whole person here, however fragmented they might mm. be or they might mm. feel or they might, they might act. Uh, so to me, to me, psychological awareness is much more focused on, on not just recognizing the other person as a person with a history and, and so on, but making space for that. Because an awful lot of the time, we try and almost take that out. It, it's almost as if the services feel that to be properly efficient and you know economical the taxpayers money you've got to uh, get on with the outcomes and you've got to focus on the, the task mm. of achieving your, your your goals and that can take over from actually just relating to the person themselves mm. as a person with a lot of complications a lot of past history and and so on so for me psychological awareness yes it does of course apply to to the staff and um, and, and so on yeah, yeah. Um, but the primary focus has got to be mm. on your service users on your clients and, and forming a relationship with them. The relationship is the centre. Rather, than I, thought, I found that really helpful, Robin, definitely. And I like the way you kind of balanced out and kind of balanced uh, more of what I was kind of bringing in there around the self-awareness. I think probably some of that's come from my a lot of contact with frontline staff through delivering training that sometimes there can be a lack of self-awareness. So probably that's influenced my take on this and my kind of response. But I appreciate that actually you could bring a lot of the themes around being self-aware into the training and support uh, theme around mm -hmm. people being well, self-aware staff. Mm -hmm. And then so recap, maybe I uh, appreciate what you're saying uh, in this area about psychological awareness, the, you put more of the emphasis on 
understanding the person that's in front of me and allowing time and space. And, and the key thing is, well, the key thing is that there's nothing very magical or very sophisticated or very specialist specialist about this. All mm. human beings relate to other human beings as human beings. It's that's the kind of default. Mm. It's mm. it's weird when we manage to not do that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. but it is yeah, yeah. sad how often we do manage to not do that mm. just putting it back just let it happen yeah it's not that's some, great. not something that's complicated and, well it is difficult because you know forming relationships with people let alone people with difficulties is is challenging but it's not well, so, yeah, I think, yeah it's yeah. not something that only psychologists are trained to do oh they are <laughs> the, they're the i ones. often say no, I it's often say normal. It's, it's ordinary. I meet my postman. I have a little chat with him about his days been and the post and the letters he's got. That's that's a relationship. Yeah, definitely. And I often say to people, it's not rocket science, but that doesn't mean it's not difficult. Because if you if you're working with people, are you trying to form relationships of trust who have had a lot of trauma and neglect in the past? Then and they're not wanting to trust you for good reasons based on the past. Then it's hard work to engage and build a relationship with us. But it's not rocket science. It's I, I, I'd reverse that slightly. I'd say it's not rocket science. It's far more complicated than that. And yet we do it all the time. But you'll never get uh, a rocket to, to, to relate to somebody, you know, they can't even have a conversation. You know, they, you know it, it is, you know, we, we underestimate the enormous sophistication of ordinariness mm, mm, definitely definitely so you put that really well and that's helped uh, help to think about that area once you've defined a pie area ask people to think about where how they'd rate the service at the moment on a some sort of scale from poor basic progressing or advanced ask them what evidence they have to support this score which validates any good work you're doing already and and you get that down but also say, well, what helps us to improve in this area? And you can highlight and uh, value different points of view about what people think is helpful. Ask people what hinders in this area and what makes it difficult to progress. And that's really important to tap in to value the points of view of all staff members here about what makes it difficult to progress. And finally, ask people to come up with a realistic plan to improve in this area. So you're co-producing a plan.